Hey friends! Happy Tuesday. Can think about that for a second. Um, before we start reading today, I look like I just woke up, which I promise I didn't. I wanted to give a shout out to those of you who, this is kind of like, there we go, that's a little better. <laughs> I wanted to give a quick shout out to everyone who submitted answers for Miss Hawkins Magical Monday questions yesterday. Um, we got answers from Kyle, Ethan, Anna Carol, Ava, Amory, Jackson, Henry, Collins, Evie, and Matthew. So you guys nailed those questions. And I'm going to make sure I let Miss Hawkins know this list of names. Um, and I'm sure we're going to get a couple more as people come in and start watching her video. And um, I know pretty much everyone has picked up their iPads from school. You guys are awesome. Hope you don't have to wait in line too long. Um, but that book that Miss Hawkins read is AR. So go ahead and hop on and take that AR quiz. Um, you have access to Epic. You have access to Mayan. All of these things. Use those resources. Um, I did remove your book levels because... You know what's best for you to read. You know what's the best. We've had we've talked about this before. How um, to become a better reader? Reading Emma's preschool books. It's not a best fit for me. Um, just like when you go to the shoe store, you try on shoes that fit your feet. You want to read books that are best fit for you. I wouldn't be comfortable if I went running in my husband's shoes or Emma's shoes. That's not the best fit for me. So make sure you um, are just being wise. Um, you don't have to stick exactly to your AR level, but just be smart about what you're reading. We don't need to be taking a million bajillion quizzes on books about colors of the rainbow. We No. But we also don't have to be reading these crazy high school level books either. Um, read what's interesting to you. Um, try to get as close to what's the best fit for you as possible. But um, those parameters have, have been removed on AR, so you don't have to worry about that monitor password on there. So... I was trying to think if I have anything else. Oh, I got to see a lot of your sweet faces this morning. That made me so happy. We had about five of us um, get on Zoom this morning at 9 o'clock um, to answer any questions and just kind of get to see each other and hang out for a little bit. And that was so fun. And um, I'll be doing that again today at 4. So parents, if you have any questions or... Um, kids, you just want to see me and see your friends and talk to each other, hop on it for, I'm going to send the code out to your parents. That's through Zoom, which is in self-service of your student iPad. So you can either download it on your own computer, your parents' phone, your iPad, whichever. Um, it's available to you on there. All right, let's get to the book. So today we are reading chapter eight, which is this is a really weird um, word, what this chapter is called. I want you to see it. It's The word is S-E-L-M-P. Selp. That's how I've always said it when I've read this before. Selp. Um, and you're going to find out what selp is shortly. Okay. So by the time Annabelle had emerged from doll state, Kate had been asleep for several hours. Annabelle was relieved to learn that her family had not visited the fun craft, so she hadn't missed out on the adventure. However, she had other things on her mind. She was determined to continue looking for Auntie Sarah. Where should I begin, wondered Annabelle. She decided to tackle the secret journal again, but she hadn't completed even one page when she heard a small commotion outside her house. She ran to the nursery window, pleased because that, pleased that because of Annabelle's disappearance and Kate's annoyance with Nora, the front door of the dollhouse had been closed for the night. Remember, they like when the doors close because they get to move around and be a little more free in the dollhouse. Yoo-hoo, called a small voice. It's us, called another. Annabelle leaned out as far out of her window as she dared, and below her she saw Tiffany and Bailey scrambling up the step stool. Oh, spectacular, thought Annabelle. Hello, she called. Annabelle, oh my stars. Nanny caught Annabelle by the bow on her dress and pulled her back into the nursery. Do you want to fall out the window? For heaven's sake, you were just in doll state. But Tiffany and Bailey are here, Annabelle replied, and we missed our visit with them last night. She dashed out of the nursery and down the stairs and threw open the doll's front door just as Tiffany. Puffing reached the top step. Step. Bailey was right behind her. Hi, cried Tiffany. Hi, replied Annabelle. We didn't get to go to your house last night. I'm really sorry. That's okay. Hey, do you think you could come over right now? I doubt it. 
Mama and Papa like to be prepared for things. But they were prepared to visit us last night. Aren't they still prepared tonight? I don't know, said Annabelle. Annabelle. They're hard to explain. Besides, they're a little cross with me right now. Tiffany brightened. I heard you were in doll state, she said admiringly. Yeah, I've been in it lots of times. How about you? None. Haven't had much of a chance replied Tiffany. Two weeks ago, we were still in the factory in Cleveland. Hey, said Annabelle, suddenly curious. Who gave you the oath? When Tiffany hesitated, she added, you didn't take the oath, didn't you? T you did take the oath, didn't you? Oh, yes. It's just that I don't know the name of the doll who gave it to us. To more than one of you, asked Annabelle. You didn't take it by yourself? Well, no, we were in the factory. All the dolls took it at once. There were hundreds of us. I guess some living doll who hadn't left the factory yet gave it to us. Girls, Bailey, come inside, please, said Mama from behind Annabelle. Quickly, you don't want to wake Kate. Tiffany and Bailey hurried inside, and Bailey ran off with Bobby, who had, been, who had followed Annabelle down the stairs. Annabelle took Tiffany by the hand. Come to the nursery with me, she whispered. I have something to show you and something to tell you. Upstairs, Annabelle was disappointed to discover Bobby and Bailey already in the nursery. Bobby, she said, why don't you and Bailey go, Annabelle paused, unable to think of where to send them. Go slide down the banister, said Tiffany brightly. Oh, good idea, said Annabelle, and the boys left the room. What do you want to show me, whispered Tiffany excitedly. This, said Annabelle proudly, with a flourish. She whisked out Annabelle, Auntie Sarah's journal, out from under the covers of her bed. What's that? Remember my Auntie Sarah, the one we were looking for the night we discovered you in your box? Yes, yeah, said Tiffany. Well, not long ago, I found her personal private journal. It was hidden on a bookshelf. Nobody knew she kept it. I'm sure of it. And nobody knows about the journal now but me. I haven't told a soul except you. Auntie Sarah was keeping it the year she disappeared. I think a clue to her disappearance might be in it. Tiffany drew in her breath. <gasps> Are we going to look for clues? She asked. Yes, just like Nancy Drew. Who's Nancy Drew? Annabelle told Tiffany about the mysteries Kate was reading. You mean we're going to be detectives like Nancy and her friends? Annabelle nodded. I bet all the clues we need are right here in this journal. And when we've discovered them and we think we know where Auntie Sarah is, we will go find her. There's Annabelle and Tiffany looking at the journal together. By ourselves? Probably. The grown-ups will never do it. At least not the ones in my family. Well, Uncle Doll, maybe, but I don't think so. You're not afraid to go exploring, are you? Me? I'm not afraid of anything. I didn't think so. Tell me about your auntie, said Tiffany. Well, Annabelle paused thoughtfully. She was very brave and very adventurous. I think she got bored just staying in our house all day long. Day in, day out, nothing changing. Annabelle leaned closer to Tiffany. You know, I'm a lot like her. I get so bored sometimes. I want to do things. I want to try things. I want to go places and see things. But we're stuck here because of the doll code of honor. I don't want to put my family in danger, but I hate having to hold still and be quiet and pretend I'm not alive. Do you know what Auntie Sarah used to do? Tiffany shook her head. She used to go blending. Blending? What's that? She would leave our house and go to a room in the Palmer's house and just blend into the scenery somewhere. You know, make it look as if a human had left her there. Even though no one had, of course, but she looked so natural that nobody paid her any attention. Oh, that sounds dangerous, said Tiffany. Well, it is. If you blend carelessly, you could probably end up in doll state, and I'm pretty sure that blending only tricks the grown-ups. I mean, Kate would always know where she had left the doll. Tiffany let out a slow whistle. I can't believe your auntie did that. She must have been very good at it, Annabelle said proudly. I never heard of it until I started reading her journal, so I think she invented it herself. Of course, blending must have scared Mama and Papa and Uncle Doll and Nanny to death. And now that she's gone, I think they fear that the worst has happened. You mean permanent doll state? Mm -hmm. Annabelle nodded. Then she said, when Auntie Sarah went blending, she could listen to the Palmers or to the radio. She could learn about all sorts of things. That must have been how she was able to tell me about the news and famous people. An adventurous woman. Oh, it was wonderful. How exciting, said Tiffany. I wish I had an auntie, one exactly like Auntie Sarah. 
Well, if we could just find Auntie Sarah, I'm sure she would agree to be your auntie as well as mine. She could be your honorary auntie. Oh, I've got to find her, said Tiffany. We have to start being detectives right away. The first thing to do is to finish reading her journal, Annabelle said. It's hard because, well, look at her handwriting. Tiffany peered into the book which lay open on Annabelle's lap. She leaned closer and closer. Boy, that is hard to read. It's all squiggly and scrawly and crawly and faded. I know, but it's where we have to start. That's them reading the journal together. No, wait, I know what we have to do first. What? asked Annabelle. We have to form a society. We do? Yes, if we're going to be good explorers, we must belong to an official society. All right. We'll call ourselves, Tiffany frowned, we'll call ourselves the Society for Exploration in the Location of Missing Persons. It's an awfully long name. We'll use the abbreviation S-E-L-M-P. Selp. Selp? That's a funny word. It doesn't matter. We know what it means. Okay, said Annabelle, and we should meet regularly, once a week. How about twice a week? I mean, if we can. Okay, twice a week. Oh, said Annabelle, I have an idea. We should start every meeting with a secret reading of the journal. Yes, we'll see if it gives us any more clues, and then we'll review all of our clues. And when we think we know where Auntie Sarah is, said Annabelle, we'll plan an exploration to find her. Perfect. That's just what Selp should be doing. Annabelle grinned at her new friend. She felt so happy that she didn't even mind much when Papa announced that it was time for Tiffany and Bailey to head back to their house. So now we know what SELMP is, S-E-L-M-P, SELMP. It's the Society, what did they say it was again? Society for Exploration and the Location of Missing Persons, S-E-L-M-P. So we're going to keep that in mind as we continue looking for Auntie Sarah. I hope you guys are enjoying this book. And when we get to the end, we can take the AR quiz on it. And that'll be so much fun. Um, if you have any questions, if you need me for anything, um, hop on that Zoom today at 4 o'clock. Or then, of course, you could just email me any questions you have, too. I hope your daily packet of work is going all right. It wasn't too hard. Don't think, hopefully it's not taking you too long. And um, miss you guys, of course. And we'll be seeing you soon. Bye.